Hey, everybody. Welcome to How To Tuesday. Man, we got a different one this week. Got my friend Nick Biondoletti. He's going to talk to us about stone crab trapping, how to do it and everything that we need to know to be legal and to be able to catch them. If you have questions about this or you just want to make suggestions for the show, you can text me at 305-930-7346. 305-930-7346. Kind of a new thing we're trying. Gives me a great way to communicate with you guys. And uh, a lot of you have been taking advantage of it. And it's really cool. So uh, much more personal connection than social media or anything else. So give it a try if you like. You can text that number and uh, leave me a, uh, or I'll be actually texting with you. It's not like you're leaving a message or anything like that. Uh, I'll get it. And I'll text you back. Okay. So we've got Nick here. And Nick does a lot of stone crabbing. He, uh, I buy them from him, and they're awesome. My family loves stone crab. If you like stone crab, uh, good news. You can actually, if you're in Florida and you um, have a fishing license, you too can be a stone crabber, a, a recreational stone crabber. So, Nick, what's up, man? How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah. I'm doing great. We're going to talk about... Little stone crabbing. I know that is is uh, something that you do a lot of. So let's go over um, kind of the regulations about who can who can do the stone gotcha. crabs, who can harvest stone stone crabs, and how you would do it. Gotcha. So anybody with a saltwater fishing license, I want to say, if to be sixteen years or older, now can uh, get the license, and you can have five traps per person, and you have to put your address and your name on each trap. And then when you have your buoy, you get a white buoy or whatever you want. And you just got to put uh, an R on it for recreational. And then you can put your traps pretty much wherever you like, just not in the Everglades National Park, which is marked by the intercoastal. So anywhere in the Florida Bay mm -hmm. is usually where people have them. Okay. And then when, when, you know, you're driving down the keys and you see a trap yard, there are always a couple of different kinds of traps there. Can you explain to people what the difference between a lobster trap and a stone crab trap is? Yeah. So lobster traps, usually the bigger wooden traps you see and the stone crab traps will be the smaller plastic, uh, black traps that you see there are mm -hmm. uh, stone crab traps, 24 by 24 inches and lobster traps, a lot bigger. I don't know the exact dimensions, but they're bigger. Yeah. So yeah. why is it that that the the wood catches the lobsters better and the plastic catches the stone crabs better? Do you know? Oh, um, that's funny because we have some traps that are actually plastic sides, lobster traps mm -hmm. with a wood lid. And I mm -hmm. personally, I think we tend to catch more lobster in them for some reason. But mm. the we have wood crab traps as well, but I don't think those catch crabs as good as the plastic ones do personally. It's interesting. Whenever I'm fishing next to the, the guys getting the stone crabs, they almost always have a pressure washer on board and they get the trap up and they pressure wash it. Um, it seems like, and one of my friends that's a commercial uh, fisherman, he told me that the clean trap, the brand new trap catches the best. Yeah. Um, is that the purpose of, of spraying them like that and getting all the debris and growth off of them yeah because they just catch better is that what that is absolutely yeah they don't Do you, uh, they don't like to go in there if it's all dirty and stuff for some reason i don't know hmm. but that's yeah, yeah we scrub ours we don't have a pressure washer on our boat but we just use a brush and scrub them that makes a big difference yeah yeah it makes cool. a huge difference all right, let's talk about um when you when you let's say you decide to you decide to do this and you're going to get your five traps. Um what is the season and what would you do uh if you acquired these five traps then you got to bait them, you got to find a productive area and uh you got to let them soak. So yeah. go go through that a little bit, see. So the season how starts October 15th. But if you're a commercial guy, you can put your traps in 10 days before the season opens and have them baited. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. Put them in on the 5th, baited, pull them on the 15th. Um, I think the recreational, you have to put them in on the 15th. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's the deal with that. Only the commercial guys can put theirs in 10 days before. Um, we bait them with pig's feet. 
which is pretty weird, I guess, if you're not, you know, <laughs> if you don't know what the stone crab eats. Uh, a lot of people use fish carcasses, which is probably the best thing to use because the fish live in the ocean and that's what the crabs are used to eating. Um, mm -hmm. People use cowhide, uh, cans of cat food, anything that attracts the crabs. Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess with a pig's foot, it's going to just last a long time, right? Like, Yeah, it lasts a little longer. Usually the water temperature is a little warmer in the beginning of the season, so they go quicker. But like this time of year, they'll last you three weeks mm -hmm. usually. And do you, do you tie that down or do you just put it in the bottom of the trap? No, we throw the pig's feet in the trap because they can't get back out of the lid. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And then um, let's talk about finding a productive area. If somebody, is there a water depth you're looking for? Is there a certain bottom structure? Yeah. I mean, I like hard bottom, sometimes a muddier bottom where the crabs can hide, you know, I mm -hmm. tend to find that when I have my traps in the grass, they don't catch as good. They catch smaller crabs, which I think the smaller crabs, that's where they kind of hang out and hide. That's where they, that's usually where I catch the smaller ones. Okay. And then the, the, the stone crab, you're supposed to measure the claw and, uh, how are you, what's the process of measuring the claw and what's a legal, what's a legal claw? A uh, legal claw now is two and seven eighths inches. It was two and three eighths last year, but they changed it this year, which I've noticed we've been getting a lot bigger claws, which is nice. Um, mm -hmm. there's, you can get a gauge to measure them. We have a gauge and then we have on our puller box, we actually have it marked out so I can just crack the claws and measure them right there. Usually I can tell, you know, when you do it enough, you, you know what ones are good and what ones are bad. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so then once you start catching, um, what's a legal limit of crab claws? You can have as many as you catch. Well, for, for, um, for commercial, right. But yeah. recreational, isn't there like a, I thought I saw that it was a ga gallons it was measured in like gallons, like a five gallon bucket, like, uh, um, scallops. Hmm. I'm not too sure about that. I've never done okay. the recreational thing personally. So for me, everything's just been commercial. So those are a okay. lot of the rules I know. Well, we'll, we'll check that out, yeah. um, on the website and see what the, what the recreational limit is, uh, before we publish this. Um, so you you found your, you found your, what about water depth? Are you, are you concerned about the water depth at all? Or are you more looking for a good bottom? Um, oh, it's really good bottom. It, it's a lot, a lot more productive. Um, mine are in like anywhere from five to eight, 12 feet. I know Steve, those guys down in Key West, theirs are out in 30 feet in the Gulf, which I think they tend to catch better mm -hmm. down there in the deeper water. But up here, you know how the, the bay is in Almorada. It's, it's really not too deep. And then you get to the park and everything's shallow. So 10 to 12 feet would be the deepest we really fish here. Yeah. Okay. And so once you get them, what's the process of, uh, of eating them, making them, you're going to boil them. What do you, how do you, how do you do that? Um, when you have all of your, you know, you, you're, 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 mon you're managing a lot more traps, but say a guy that has, you know, five traps for him, five traps for his wife, five traps for his kid you could have like 15 traps that's what you're working yeah. uh you bring all those claws in how do you prepare them to eat so what i do is get them in leave them in salt water like in a bucket you know you don't want to leave them dry all day um get in drain the bucket fill a pot of water usually not too much water you don't want to overboil it it's more of like a steam you know mm. um get the water boiling and then I do anywhere from seven to eight minutes, put them in, bring it back to a boil and then pull them out, have a, like an ice bath with water and a cooler, mm -hmm. dump them in there and let them sit for like 30 minutes usually, and then bag them up and they're good to go. They're good to go. And what's yeah. the, um, what's the price on, on uh, stone crabs these days? I want to say they're getting 11 for mediums. 17 for large, 24 for jumbo, and 28 to 30 for the colossals. 
of how how does that com- how does that compare to um before the the regulation changed on size um i think it's it's about the same okay yeah all right cool and um let's see anything else we can talk about with uh with the stone crabs anything else anybody needs to know i mean i guess you know just when you're when you're cracking the claws on the boat a lot of people if you don't do it enough people think you just take the claw and break it off when there's an actual way to do it you know you gotta like push the claw in and just kind of crack it down at a certain angle because if you break the claw off like most people will do you'll Mm -hmm. pull it out of that it's like a socket and once you pull that out that claw usually won't come back you have Mm. to leave that there's like a little uh, joint so once you crack it if that's still in there that's how they grow their claws back um okay you can't break the egg bearing females that's illegal you can take this was a big question i had the other day i was talking to rich um about taking both claws if it was legal or not and it is it is legal people don't recommend it because then the crab doesn't really have a strong enough chance at surviving as it would with even if it had one claw but i mean if you have (laughs) if you have a nice crab with two claws that are going to make you 40 bucks it's hard not to take them both when you're trying to make a living yeah it is legal but I would imagine that if you're if you're really catching good and um you know you got to look out for next year you got to look yeah. out for you got to look out for that and uh, somebody that does this for a living rather than just going out there and and kind of maybe they're only doing it for a year or two they might not really care yeah. you know honestly they'll take both claws but somebody that's doing it for a living just like a fishing guide that's you know fly fishing for tarpon or catching tarpon all the time you're going to be much more careful about releasing those fish as that is that's your livelihood the crabs are your livelihood so probably not not the best practice to take both uh and it probably is very good practice to learn how to crack them so that they are actually able to regrow that claw yeah and i think uh they i think it's something like a female has up to one hundred and sixty thousand eggs or something at a time so you ever know what have you ever heard anything about what the survivability of those eggs is i mean if they have so many it sounds most species that have tremendous numbers of eggs like that (laughs) tremendous there's only a few of them that make it you know (laughs) yeah i'm sure that's (laughs) That's why (laughs) yeah exactly that's why they have so many (laughs) um so i'm sure that somebody that's never uh gotten a stone crab before one of their questions would be how do you keep from getting bit because that looks like a pretty strong claw (laughs) and it seems like uh you could easily make a mistake what's your what's the the trick to handling them so you don't get bit or do you just is that just part of it well (laughs) it is kind of part of it but you want to avoid it um i think they're they fourteen thousand pounds per square inch is what a crab claw when they close their claw on something, that's what they're, the Dang, pressure man, is. Yeah. It's like getting bit by a pit bull. It's probably a lot worse, but yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not fun. It happens. It happened to me actually a few weeks ago on accident. There's those little ones get in there and they'll get under all the bones. And when you go to reach in there to grab another one, they'll be there waiting. Um, <laughs> also. Another, Light you up. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. It'll make you cry. Um, Another thing that happened to me a month ago, which was funny, my dad and I were cooking the crabs, dumped them out. I was like, oh, man, I got to get a badass picture. I got all these crabs. I went to grab one claw. This was three hours after pulling them. Went to grab a claw and one just went and bit down on my finger. So they don't don't necessarily uh, stop biting until they're cooked. Wow. Yeah. So does is it equal pressure when they're dead as alive? I, I felt pretty equal to me. Yeah. Yeah. Will it break the skin or, oh, or yeah. does it just crush you? No, it'll break the skin. Some of them are like, so you have like, some of them we call them pinchers. They have the sharper claw mm-hmm. on the end and those ones will cut you pretty good. But the bigger ones tend to be a lot slower. Like the jumbo to colossal size, when you go to handle them, they're a lot slower for some reason. Mm-hmm. But those little ones are the ones that, they'll get you good 
So what's the trick to handling them so that you don't, is there, is there a method? Uh, obviously there is somebody that does it all the time, doesn't get bit every day. It, it happens maybe yeah. a few times a season, but what's the, what's the technique to, to handling them? I mean, I personally, if there's just depends on how many are a trap at the same time, but just, you know, you can, I grab some of the smaller ones that I know aren't legal by the legs, throw them out the boat, kind of clear up the traps. So the ones I know are good, I can work with. Um, I, I'm just quick, I guess they'll start, they'll spread their hand, their arms open like that. And you just got to be quick. If you reach in there and try to grab one claw, you're going to get bit. Like my girlfriend tried to do that a couple weeks ago. And I had to tell her like, you know, if you're going to grab them, grab them. Because if you go in there, they're going to bite you. And uh, you got to grab both claws at the same time. Oh yeah. So that's the technique. That's my technique. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people use like tongs or, I mean, so, some kind of stick or something you could put in there to get them to grab it and then you can do it. But when you're pulling, you know, over a hundred traps a day, you're trying to do it as fast as possible. So just getting it down, I get, you know, you do it so much that it just, it becomes natural. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. And, uh, when we, we talked about when the season opened, but when does the season end? Um, May 2nd. May 2nd. Yeah. And then you got to pull, pull all those traps. Yeah. Everything has to be out of the water by the 5th. So you have five days to, to get them out. And then, then you got five days to get them out. Can you harvest what's in them after the season's over? No. So if on the last day, you just dump, you can, you can get the crabs out. But then if you wait. Uh, it, you know, it takes you five days to pull all your traps or whatever. You got to dump out whatever's in them. Yep. Mm. Yeah. That's got to be tempting for somebody that didn't have such a great season <laughs> when you catch, when you catch late like that, that would be tough. Yeah. Um, okay, cool, man. Well, that's, uh, that's very interesting. A lot of people don't realize that, that there is a recreational season on stone crab. Even if they realize it, they may not realize how easy it is to do. You, you know, there are places like, um, uh, like Cudjo Sales or someplace like that that sell yeah. traps, um, and you can get everything you need, and and each person is legally allowed five traps. So it's something yeah. kind of fun to do. Don't it, it's fun to do with the kids, as long as they don't get bit. Once they get bit, right. their their uh, their crab days you might. They're either going to love it or they're never going again. But right, you know, it, it's it'll be super funny when they watch dad get bit though. Oh yeah. Uh, and so they might like that even better. Uh, yep. But anyway, stone crabbing in the Florida Keys, that's a that's a, a good thing to do. And we got some advice from uh, a true pro, somebody that does it commercially. And um, so there you go. That's that's all you need to know for uh, recreational stone crab trapping. If you want more information, you can go to the Fish and Wildlife uh uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife website. That'd be the best place I would imagine for all the regulations and make sure that you are following all the rules and that you are licensed and that you are not getting more than your share or undersized crabs. Same as lobster. Uh, I don't think that they, they don't, they don't really give you a pass on those things. It's very illegal <laughs> to take those. And usually they throw the book at you, I think. So make sure that you are legal and ready to go. If you have any questions, ask your Ask your favorite fish and wildlife officer, and they will make sure that you are legal and ready to go. All right. Thanks, Nick. All that right, was Tom. awesome. Yeah, man. And uh, I'll need about um, five or six pounds next awesome. time I see you. I got right. you. Yeah, see man. you, Nick. See you. Okay. That was How To Tuesday with Nick Biondoletti. He uh, does a lot of crabbing, like we talked about, as well as fishing and everything else. He comes from a, a commercial fishing family. His dad is a um, fishing guide. So if you want to do some of, uh, some of that stone crab trapping, go for it. If you have any questions or suggestions for this show or any future shows, you can text me at 305-930-7346, 305-930-7346. No, of course, that's not my cell phone number, but it is a service that we are using now. And I will actually text you back if you text there. And uh, it's pretty cool. I think uh, I think it's something we'll stick with and uh, something we'll try. So if you have any questions, text me there. Otherwise, we'll see you next week for another How-To Tuesday with a great guest. See you.